But maybe one day civil engineering firms will switch to using this game for design because a lot of the features look great and very useful. I love that you kind of have a blank slate. I feel like I could literally design some of the projects I work on with this game. Okay, so we got a, a big circle. Oh, I see. They're kind of going for a union symbol, it looks like. I love that. I can't really tell from here how big of a plot of a land that is. Like that could be small, that could be really huge. So I'm excited to see where this is going. Yeah, just the idea of using geometry like this, like I literally do this in AutoCAD. Like I just draw a bunch of circles and lines, connect them, trim them, and things like this come together. So this is very realistic to how a civil engineer would actually lay something out. It's very cool that they actually are just putting in the roads. Okay, so this is a large piece of land. These are roads. And I could just tell like a typical smaller road. Like I can't tell what type of roads those are yet, but I guess they're probably at least 20 feet wide. That's kind of giving me a sense of scale. Lots of curves, beautiful curves. I like this. I feel like it's every simple engineer's dream to just have a blank slate to be able to design. Oh, I love how they're able to put in intersections like that. It already does the curves. What is this? Is this a grading tool? Oh, that's really cool. Oh, they're like putting in a hole. Literally, they're putting in a hole. <laughs> All right. Oh, and filling it with water. Okay. So we got a nice little, you know, waterfront property. I'm not sure what that center water thing is supposed to be and how the water gets there. Maybe it's a little pond. They're going to put a little park next to it. But a lot of these water structures, they, they have some bridges and stuff, but they're also going to need storm drain systems to probably outlet into this water or if they need to go it back out into what I assume is maybe the ocean or maybe it's a lake. I'm not sure. They're going to need some culverts. I love that they have different layers too. That is very accurate to civil engineering design. You have different layers for things. You're looking at different things. What are these, just overpasses? That's pretty cool that they could put those in like that. I wish I could say that architects are just artists, but the truth is civil engineers actually really do need architects. So I learned from experience that the phrase, it looks like a civil engineer designed it, is not a compliment. It means it works, but it's ugly. You really need architects to help with the aesthetics of a design because, you know, I could try my best, but I'm just really focusing on does it work? And they have to think about does it work and also does it look good? Because in the end, you're usually designing a project, especially something like this for a city, Aesthetics are really important. No one wants to live somewhere ugly. I think that it's easy for engineers and architects to kind of, you know, go back and forth about what's more important, but it really is a symbiotic relationship. Like they need to work together to have the best project. So one thing that I think is really interesting when you're laying out roads like this, you also have to think about utilities. And most utilities like water, sewer, storm drain, gas, power, you know, electrical lines, they usually go in the road and they follow the path of the road because that makes it easier for if there's any issues, you could just, you know, dig into the road and you're not digging in someone's backyard. So if you have a really intricate design in your road in a pattern kind of like this, your utilities are also going to need to be like that. And you need to think about, is it efficient? Are you going to have dead ends? With water, you really want to avoid dead ends. You want to have looped systems because then you'll have stagnant water. So you really want to think about utilities when you're designing your roads as well. Ooh, everything filling itself. Oh, I actually love that they're putting some rock around this little road that's along the water because I was actually thinking like that if that's just dirt like that's gonna erode away water you know coming around there so putting down some like rock 
that's not going to erode away. It's going to help protect those embankments and in turn and protect the roads. When you're designing things next to water, you really have to pay attention to erosion control. I love that it shows the cars going through too and kind of showing the flow of traffic. At least in California, there is a difference between civil engineers and traffic engineers. You tend to learn about it in college is that if you have that experience, you cannot use that to qualify for civil engineering. I think that might be different in other states, but that is the case, at least in California and some other states that traffic is kind of a subset of civil engineering, but it also is its own thing. But then the actual design of the roads themselves, like the asphalt pavement, the base underneath, the curvature of the road, that is transportation engineering. And that is under civil, and you can have a licensed civil engineer design those. So that's kind of the difference between traffic and transportation engineering. I'm planting some trees. Trees are really great for erosion control too because the roots can actually help hold the soil together and so any sort of trees or vegetation can be really useful for erosion control as well. Ooh, so pretty. This looks like something vacation destination, almost like a man-made island or something. I feel like this designer, the way that they're drawing things and then deleting it and then redoing it and kind of tweaking it, that's what I do on a daily basis. And sometimes I feel like I do it too much and I have to remember that things just need to be done. They don't need to be perfect. And clients rarely pay for perfect. They pay for workable. Like this person's showing, like this is absolutely like a day in the life of a civil engineer moving things around. What I see on my screen is just like a black screen with some colored lines. Uh, they don't look quite as beautiful as this. But maybe one day civil engineering firms will switch to using this game for design because a lot of the features look great and very useful. In AutoCAD, we do have things called blocks, and they are basically like pre-designed little segments that you can just drop in. For example, in this game, it looks like they have like intersections that are kind of already done, so you don't have to redo them every single time. And then you can actually modify that if needed, but you have certain blocks that you can put in just to make it go quicker and easier and also have things consistent. And I feel like consistency and conformity is very important in civil engineering design. Oh, I love that they do the utilities too. I'm a utility girl, so I like to see it. Got some power lines. Oh, you get to see it develop. I love this because in civil engineering, sometimes if there's like an open plot of land or you're working with a developer, you might be just designing part of it and not all of it because you only have so much budget, but you want to plan for the future. So sometimes you might have roads that kind of dead end, but in the future you're going to build a road you're gonna to connect to that road and build further. Um, so you have to think, you always have to be thinking about future use and you wanna make it easy. You don't wanna to plant a bunch of trees at the end of a dead end road if in 10 years you're gonna go and rip down all those trees just to build in a new road. So you wanna be thinking about the future. I think this game is really cool that you kind of lay down the foundation and then it shows things being built, kind of that flow of development. So I think that's a really cool feature of this game. So he's adding a lot of trees and he looks like he's adding them next to sidewalks. You know, if you do that in the right way, it's great. But oh my goodness, have I seen so many sidewalks next to trees that just destroy the sidewalk. Like tree roots can completely uproot concrete city will place limits on how tall buildings can be because they don't want to completely, you know, shadow a neighborhood or block views or make things look inconsistent. So they might have requirements on how tall you can build your building. These are really cool. I love how the highway is lower and they can actually see like the topography of the area. Like this isn't just a flat land like it has dimension literal dimension to it that is so cool you know i think every person on the road that's driving 
thinks that they're smarter than a civil engineer and they're like, who designed this intersection? But everything's so connected and there's reasons behind why you design certain things. There might be limitations. There might be something as simple as the client didn't provide enough money to make it better. You know, this is what we're working with. I don't know, that looked really realistic to me. The grading in this area, because I actually love that there's this little tool and it's actually changing the slopes along the side of the road. They actually showed some of the contour lines, which those contour lines, they actually are different elevations and they can be, you know, at different scales. It could be one, like each line could be a foot, each line could be five foot, you know, it depends on the scale. I feel like the most unrealistic part about it is that in actual design, you usually try to balance your cut and fill. So if you're cutting out part of the hill to make a slope like that, you're gonna have to do something with that dirt that you're cutting out. Do you put it somewhere else? That would be preferable, uh, if, especially if it's close by. So you're kind of balancing that cut fill. If they're not actually reusing that soil, they have to haul it off somewhere and that can cost a lot of money. What's the hardest part about designing a train station? It would probably just be location and mapping out where the actual train tracks are going to go. Because in any city that has a train that goes through it, every car hates to be the, the one that has to stop right before the little you know, safety barrier comes down and you have to wait for the train to pass. So you have to be strategic on where you place those and how to make sure you're not interfering traffic that much because what if the train breaks down and you're just blocking so much traffic? I feel like those are the type of things that would be the hardest in designing just a train system in general. I also feel like you definitely want to keep the train away from residential homes, probably commercial buildings too. If you can, sometimes you really don't have that decision. But in this case, it looks like they're actually designing the train station, so they should probably have some say in it. But it does look like it's kind of out in the middle of the perimeter of the city, so I think that's a good location for it. But see, here is where it's gonna cross the road. And so that's gonna be a pl place where there might be some backed up traffic. And you would hope that that's not next to like a hospital because that would really suck if a train's going by and gets stuck and then an ambulance can't get there. I think those are things you have to think about when you're sighting crossings. You know, the train go under that. I'm so curious to know if this program shows like vertical clearances. I see that it's adjusting the grades of that embankment as you design it. That's really cool. But that's something you would have to do during actual design of a train track, a road. But when it's like going underneath bridges and stuff, like does it take into consideration the height of the train? Um, and does it raise the, the road above it? And then when you raise a road, you're increasing the slope of that road and Roads will have maximum slopes that they can do. And you want to make it kind of gradual. You don't want it to just be like a sharp corner. You know, you want to have a curve. So I feel like civil engineering, when you're designing things, there's always a domino effect. If you change one thing, it affects something else. And then you change that, it affects something else. So it's never as simple, like whenever it's like, oh, can you just make this little change? It's never a little change. It's a series of changes. When you have a blank slate though, at least you can make the changes pretty easily. But once it's already built and then you have to change something, that's a lot harder. That looks really nice. I like the aesthetics of those rocks. I love that they showed the water tower. I feel like water towers, not only do they provide emergency storage and pressure in a water system, they're also iconic, like you can have art on them, you, know, you can see it from a far distance, like, oh, there's that city or that neighborhood because of the water tower. So I get excited when I see water towers in games. All right, this is an interesting bridge. I don't love the way that they placed how to get on that bridge because you have to take a sharp right turn and then another sharp right turn and then another sharp right turn. It's like one, two, three, yeah. And that really depends on the type of vehicle. You know, if it's just a little sedan, that's probably not a big issue. But if you have like a larger truck, making tighter turns like that is a lot harder. 
Everything else looks great though. I love this. I need to play around with this. I love that you kind of have a blank slate. I feel like I could literally design some of the projects I work on with this game. Like some of these elements that they're adding, it's like I literally draw that in AutoCAD. Maybe I'll do that. I'll, I'll, the next project I work on, I'm gonna build it in this game, present it to the client as a uh, nice model like this. Oh, it's a pedestrian bridge. The pedestrians are kind of walking into traffic. So at least the turns make a little more sense, but it's also very wide for a pedestrian bridge. I don't think it needs to be that wide. Lots of trees. I don't know if you would actually put trees next to the power lines like that. There's definitely, you don't want trees going into power lines. So the way they just plopped all those trees right next to those power lines, that's not very realistic. They just need to space them out a little more. You can still put trees there. What is this? Is this like um, traffic modeling? I think that is. I think that is so cool. Just be able to, okay, let's lay out the road this way and then let's see what happens when cars drive on it. How does it flow? I feel like the flow of traffic is such an important part of city planning. Awesome. I love this game. I need to play this game. I'm not really a gamer, but I feel like this made me a little bit of a gamer. That was super fun. For more Experts React, check out Gameology's Facebook and YouTube pages. And if you'd like to follow me, you can find me on Instagram at xxine. It's Christine, like Christmas. See you next time.